The Tequila Worm by Viola Canales, Chapter 12, Five New Dresses. The phone rang early the next morning. Berta, I can't believe you ate the tequila worm. Gross. How did it taste? Terrific. But it didn't cure my problems. A tequila worm cures homesickness, not problems. Well, I've got two big ones. What are they? How to get those five new dresses and the $400, I said. I told Mama that you and I had a plan. I even called you my comadre. Berta laughed. You're quick, Sophia. Let me come over and show you the quinceanera pictures. Then we can talk about a plan, like real comadres. You mean your zillions of pictures are back already? Yeah, and I made extras of you and your mama dancing. And how many did you make of you and Jaime kissing? A zillion? Two zillion. The most daunting thing about going to St. Luke's was not that it was over 300 miles away or that it was a Episcopalian, not Catholic, or even that it was way up on a hill away from anything and everything. No, it was having to dress up every evening, Monday through Friday, for a formal sit-down dinner. This had worried Mama too. So even if we decide that you can go, Sophia, what are you going to do about your clothes? You only have one decent dress, the one you wear to Mass. I thought of the piggy bank Papa bought me years ago in Mexico. It contained about $3, not even enough for one dress. I kept having the same nightmare over and over again. I was sitting down to dinner in my Sunday dress and there were seven other students at the table, which was set with the finest silver, china, and crystal. They all stood up and started pointing and laughing at me. I looked down and was horrified to find that my nice white dress had turned into one taped together with pieces of Tia Petra's rolls of plastic. I woke up in a sweat, remembering Taco Head. Mama and Lucy were visiting the abuelitos across town. Papa was on the front porch, watering his Mexican jasmine and listening to his singing canary. I made a fresh pot of coffee and was putting out a plate of pumpkin empanadas when Berta came into the kitchen carrying two huge photo albums in a big bag. Wow, I poured coffee. It'll take us years to... And these are only the really good ones. After our third cup of coffee and our third empanada, we were only halfway through our pictures. I'll die if I see one more shot of her kissing Jaime, I thought. Okay, she slapped the album shut. You've done a really good job at being my comadre by looking at my pictures. You even got the props down. Kitchen table, coffee, pan dulce. So now let's talk about you and those dresses. Not until we talk about you and Jaime. What's it like kissing him? Sophia! No, really. It's important that I help you, too. Remember what Tia Petra said? My dream is not about kissing Jaime. So what is it about? Well, it's about being with him, about how he makes me feel about myself. And how's that? Like I'm in a dream. And kissing him? What's that like? That's personal. Come on, Berta. You can't treat me like a kid and tell me to stop being one. Um, Kissing him is like, well, going outside yourself. You feel wobbly and all. And you like that? It's hard to explain. I don't really understand it either. So how do you want me to support all this? Well, you can help me not flunk math. It's hard to study when you're in love. Sophia. Okay, okay. I'll help you with your math. Thanks. Now, those dresses. Why don't you do what I did with my quinceanera? Get, get yourself some dress padrinos and madrinas to sponsor and buy them. I sat up in my chair. I can't do that. But why not? Because it's not me. I have to do this my way. Sophia, what's wrong with getting other people to help you? That's part of learning to be a comadre anyway. I know it's just, well, it's just like Papa. You know how he wanted a guitar and then went about making one in his cabinet shop, using his tools and stuff? That's how I am too. You're going to make these dresses yourself. You can't even button your button straight. 
I told you to take home egg with me, but no. You took advanced algebra. I know, but, but what? Well, you took home egg, so you must know something about sewing. And how about we take my dama dress and help you make it into one of my new dresses? Your dama dress? I'll think of you every time I wear it. It'll just hang there in the closet otherwise. Please, Berta? But what about the other four? Well, oh, I have an idea. I'm bigger than you, right? Remember that blue dress I wore to the drive-in? Do you like it? Yes, it's nice. That's dress too. What? It's yours, I'll just make it fit you. No, I'm not taking your dress. You're not taking it. I'm giving it to you. It's a present. No. Yes, part of being a comadre is learning to receive. So we have two dresses and only three to go. Papa walked in. Berta, how wonderful you looked at your quinceanera. Berta showed him the picture of me dancing with Mama. Ah, my two girls look so beautiful. And that dama dress, Sophia, makes you look so grown up. I kicked Berta under the table when she blabbed to Papa about our plan for my new dresses. He took out his thin wallet and pulled out a crisp $10 bill. He handed it to Berta. I want to be the proud padrino of the third new dress, he said, beaming. Papa poured himself some coffee. I have all the faith in the world that you two will conjure up the other two somehow. Then he went outside. Sophia, how much money do you have in that tequila worm of yours? About $3. Why? That's perfect. I've got it all figured out. Figured what out? Your other two dresses. How we're getting them. And for only about $3. I'd heard wrong. Maybe even cheaper. On Saturdays, everything goes on sale for 30 cents a pound. A pound? What's selling for 30 cents a pound? Your new dresses. What? Yes, we're getting your other two dresses at Johnson's Ropa Usada. I shot to my feet. We can't go there. Johnson's Ropa Usada had been a running joke between Berta and me for years now. The name conjured up the whopping shock we'd gotten when we first walked into the massive concrete and cinder block warehouse near downtown McAllen. It was a colossal room covered wall to wall with 15 to 20 foot high mountains of bras, panties, plaid shirts, fuzzy slippers, baseball caps, t-shirts, snow pants, overalls, work clothes, jackets, dresses, boots, everything and anything, even yellowed wedding dresses. Tiny squealing kids squirmed all over these colorful mountains, rolling down their sides, chasing each other over piles and piles of clothes to where their mothers sat in craters, sifting piece by piece through the mounds around them. Anything the Salvation Army and Goodwill didn't want eventually came here to Johnson's Ropa Usada to get picked over one last time before getting shipped off to the third world. For a flat fee, you could buy a whole bale. They would open it for you and you could choose whatever you wanted inside, leaving the rest to become part of one of the mountains nearby. So if you bought something here, you also acquire the dubious honor of wearing a shirt or dress that everyone else in the entire country had rejected and cast off, even those who got their clothes at secondhand stores. The first time we went, Berta and I had laughed so hard we fell into a pile of clothes, tears running down our faces. No way, I said as we parked in front of Johnson's. Berta began to laugh. Berta, I said, you're supposed to be helping me. People died in those clothes. Everyone will laugh at me. My, na my nightmare came back to me. Taco had at a formal dinner. Don't worry, Berta said. When I'm done with them, they'll look tailor-made. Perfect. No one will ever know where you got them. I thought of what the Petra had said about Berta. She often bit off more than she could chew. I left Johnson's ropa usada carrying a couple of old dresses, a bathrobe, a tangle of neckties, and a king-size bedsheet, all for $2.35. Berta had insisted. Trust me, Sophia, you'll see. Anyway, you should be thrilled, since my mother agreed to help us transform all our stuff. You'll be like Cinderella. For the next two weeks, I spent every afternoon and evening at Berta's house. Under her mother's supervision, Berta measured, cut, and sewed. 
I helped the best I could by counting buttons, cutting, and doing anything Berta and her mother asked me to do. But mostly I climbed on and off a chair to stand and get pins stuck everywhere. My dama dress only needed to be shortened. Berta's blue dress with the glass buttons in front was the second one. The third came from Walmart, bought with Papa's $10. It was bright yellow with white piping and a smart white belt. When it was time to work with the bathrobe, the tangle of ties, and the king-size bed sheet from Johnson's, I shuddered as I got onto the chair. Trust me, Sophia, Berta kept saying. Jaime would sometimes stop by for a Coke. That was when I did my best to help Berta with her dream by telling him stories about how smart, kind, wonderful, and pretty Berta was. Then I kept watch for Thea Balea so the two could sneak a kiss or two. And every night I helped Berta with her math. Somehow Berta turned the bathrobe into my fourth dress. It was red cotton with a bow my mom made from the tangle of ties. We laughed long and hard remembering all of Mama's crazy creations, especially the tequila worm Halloween costume and her pantyhose baby. Berta, you've done terrific magic so far, but I'd rather die than be seen wearing a bedsheet to dinner, I said as she started tracing a pattern on the king-size sheet. Berta laughed and just kept on tracing, cutting, pinning, sewing. As she snapped a thread with her perfect teeth, I kicked my foot worrying. A few nightmares later, she called. Sophia, your fifth and best new dress is ready. She met me at the door with a green dress on a hanger. Well, it does look like a dress, I thought as I put it on. But everyone would instantly know what it was made from. Mama and Lucy came over to marvel at the five new dresses. They insisted I model each one. The green is by far the prettiest. So elegant, they all agreed, clapping. It was emerald silk with a narrow waist, three-quarter sleeves, a rounded neck, and a delicate black Asian design. Mama thanked Berta and Thea Balea over and over. Now, Berta, said Mama, has Sophia been a good comadre to you, too? Oh, yes, said Berta. I would have flunked math without her and not gotten to kiss Jaime so much, I added silently. I smiled at her as she adjusted my belt, helping her was nothing compared to what she'd done for me. Lucy looked longingly at us.